Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be going over the best samurai build you can use. Now, the reason I believe it's the best out there is not just because you're able to take out the toughest bosses in the game fairly easily, but because it stays as true as possible to the types of weapons samurais would use while being extremely effective. On top of that, I did add an easily customizable feature in this build that makes your samurai stand out from the others without losing the look whatsoever. This is an optional feature and not needed, but it does add a good amount of damage to our setup, and it just looks and feels extremely nice. So I don't get why you wouldn't use it, but that's completely up to you. Anyways, let's actually get into the build now, and we'll start it off with the weapons Samurais would use. So the most iconic weapon for them, or what everyone thinks of when they hear the word Samurai, is a Katana. And for that, we got two options for you to choose from that are both amazing picks. We got the regular Uchi Katana, which looks like your basic Katana, nothing too crazy about it, still looking very nice though. And we also got the Nagakiba, which is a longer length version of the Uchi Katana. Now the difference between the two is very subtle all around. The Uchi Katana is going to do a bit more damage while having a lower stat requirement to use. Whereas the Nagakiba makes up for those areas with the sheer size of itself, giving you a massive advantage with its range. Now its heavy attack is also complemented by its size, making your character lunge forward, giving you some insane reach with it. The Uchi Katana can do this as well, yet you have to be holding it with one hand to do so. I also want to add that both of these weapons passively have 45 blood loss, so when we are doing a boss fight, you'll usually be able to proc a blood loss a few times without this build being bleed focused. All around, I'd say the Nagakiba is better if you plan on doing a lot of PvP, but if you just want to play solo, I'd rather go with the Uchi Katana for its lower stat requirement. Now, for where to find these weapons, you can get the Uchi Katana that comes with the Samurai starting class, which I would recommend going with. If you didn't pick the Samurai class, no worries. You can also find it in the Death Touched Catacombs in Stormhill Limgrave. For the Nagakiba, you can get this after defeating the Bloody Finger Hunter, Yura, who is located north of the Murkwater Cave. Both of these are early game items that are incredibly powerful and more than capable enough of taking you all the way to the end game and more. Now moving forward, we can go over the Ashes of War for both swords and personally, I really enjoyed Unsheathed. It's a keen Ash of War which means it's going to do more damage based on our dexterity stat, which we have a lot of points in. What it does is your character sheathes the blade in its holster before doing one of two attacks. If you do the heavy input, your character strikes in a vertical movement doing the highest damage. But if you do the light input, he strikes in a horizontal movement doing less damage but covering a wider area around you. Lastly, it does 30 poise damage when using the heavy input, so there's a really good chance you can break a boss's guard and get off some easy damage. You don't have to use this Ash of War because there are other good options as well, but if you do choose to use something else, make sure it at least has the keen affinity to do the most damage possible. For where to find the Ash of War Unsheathed, you can get it by killing a Teardrop Scarab that's located in the southeast portion of the Agil Lake, another easy early game item that is extremely good to use. Additionally, I do like to throw on the Shard of Alexander that increases all Ash of War attacks by 15%. Just a great talisman that's used in so many builds, highly recommended. Besides all of this, we still have another way of making our attacks a lot more powerful. So if you remember what I mentioned at the beginning of this video about customizing your samurai, this is exactly what I'm going into. Since we're using the keen variation on both of our swords, this leaves room for us to buff our weapons, and there's a couple of incantations we can go with. We can use Electrify Armament, which adds lightning damage to our weapon for 90 seconds. Blood Flame Blade, which adds fire damage and an extra 40 bleed buildup for 60 seconds, or we can use Order's Blade, which adds holy damage for 90 seconds. So what I notice with a lot of samurai builds is you usually just level up dexterity for your damage and that's it, there's nothing more to it. But with this here, all of these incantations scale with faith, so we're gonna have a secondary stat to level up to increase our damage even more, and these buffs are better than just using Grease because they become pretty much infinite only consuming mana, have a longer lasting duration, and they'll end up doing more damage as well. The only thing is I wouldn't really recommend using the Holy Variation just because a lot of the main bosses in the game are pretty resistant to Holy damage and you have to get some extra points in intelligence to use it. 
But if you like that kind of aesthetic, not to worry, it's not going to cripple the build or anything. Now for where to find these, you can get Electrify Armament from Brother Korn at the round table only after giving him the Dragon Cult's prayer book. For Bloodflame's Blade, you'll have to kill a Scarab that is located in the southwest area in Leorna of the Lakes. Lastly, for Order's Blade, you can buy this from D, Hunter of the Dead, who is found just before the Summon Water Village. Do keep in mind that these elemental buffs' damage can be increased further with the help of a Scorpion Charm. There's one for each buff, so depending on which one you choose, you should definitely grab one to go accordingly. If you have all of them, don't put them all on at the same time, because each one makes you take 10% increased physical damage. Now we can counter the effects of one of them fairly easily by using the spell Golden Vow. This just makes us take 10% reduced damage and do 15% increased damage for 80 seconds. This is a must-have spell just for how good it is all around. For where to find this, you can pick it up off of a dead body in the Corpse Stench Shack in Mount Gelmer. Now the last thing for these buffs is if you're using Blood Flame's Blade, I'd recommend using the spell Flame Grant Me Strength. This is going to add an extra 40% total damage to our attacks, because it increases our physical damage by 20%, and our fire damage by another 20% as well for 30 seconds. Just something to keep in mind if you plan on using Blood Flame's Blade a lot, or any of the other buffs in general. For its location, you can find it behind Fort Gale on a body that's in between two flamethrower towers. Again, another really good early game item. Continuing on, Samurais would also use a spear type of weapon alongside their katanas for a more mid-range engagement. For us, the closest looking weapon we have to match that, which is also our hardest hitting weapon, the Cross Naginata. Now just like the katanas, we're going to be using the Keen variation, so we're going to be able to apply all of the same buffs to it as well. Additionally, it does come with the same passive blood loss, in fact, it actually has a little bit more coming in at 50 versus the katanas 45. Not a huge difference, but again, we are going to be able to proc a few blood losses on bosses as an added bonus. The main pro to this weapon, aside from it just hitting much harder than our swords, is its long reach just like the Nagakiba. Well, I guess that's kind of implied because it is a spear, but anyways, you got a heavy thrusting attack extending the spear out for maximum range, and even our light attack combo pokes out as well. Like I said with the Nagakiba, this is another fantastic weapon for PvP fights with its range and high damage. Furthermore, we still have the Ash of War for this weapon, which is absolutely phenomenal. Sword Dance. It's got long reach, a nice stagger effect, and lots of damage. What's really nice about this Ash of War is it has two parts, meaning if you hit a boss with the initial input and he turns around to smack you right after, you can just roll away. But if he doesn't turn around or get staggered, you can follow up right away with its second input for more damage. It's a really nice optional feature having two parts, which also works really well in PvP for tricking your opponent or just instantly closing the gap with them. All in all, I highly recommend this Ash of War. Now for where you can find both of these items, the Cross Naginata can be found in the Gale Tunnel, which is located right in between Kaelid and Limgrave. For the Ash of War Sword Dance, this can be acquired after killing a Teardrop Scarab that is located near the Minor Erd Tree in Southwest Liorna. Ending off for our main weapons, Samurais would also tend to use a bow for longer ranged fights. Now just like the Katanas, once more we have two options to pick from that are both extremely effective in their own ways one of them being the Albaneric Bow. The reason for this bow is not just because it has the highest damage out of all the other bows, but because we can also change its Ash of War to one that is going to do the most for us, Reign of Arrows. So the way we're going to use this option is very easy. Just use the Ash of War and drop a metric ton of arrows down on your enemies, doing a lot of damage and placing status effects pretty quickly. Now there are some pros and cons to this Ash of War. For instance, it works amazing on large targets, easily landing most of the arrows for the highest damage possible because of its fairly large area of effect, and only consuming one arrow to rain down 20 arrows, which makes it very cost effective as well. So it's generally a good weapon slash Ash of War for most bosses in the game, but the downside to this Ash of War is it doesn't work good on smaller targets. It's not really a huge issue for how effective and useful this setup is, However, I do have that second option that covers pretty much every enemy in the game. For that, we're going to be using the Black Bow. 
just like the Alban Eric Bow, we're not using it for its flat damage, rather for its Ash of War. Now the Black Bow is unique because it has an Ash of War that none of the other bows can have, Barrage. It's exactly what it sounds like, your character can rapidly fire arrows from his bow, sending tons of shots down on your target with the same accuracy of shooting regularly. The upside to this is you're going to be able to proc status effects a lot more consistently because the two arrow types we're going to be using are the Bloodbone and Coldbone arrows. This sounds great and all, but I feel like the cons do outweigh this pro. So you use up more arrows when using this Ash of War because it's basically just a rapid fire. It also takes more time to proc those status effects because it may shoot rapidly, but you're still only shooting one arrow at a time. This is why I'm more of a fan of the Albaneric Bow with Arrow Rain, but again, not to worry, I'll tell you where you can find both of these. For the Albaneric Bow, you'll actually have to farm it from the archers in the Ordina town that sit on the rooftops. Now this is kind of far into the game, so another extremely easy option is to just go with the Samurai class that comes with the Longbow. A really good pick with a bit less damage, but a lot easier to acquire. Now to get the Ash of War Barrage, you'll actually have to kill a Teardrop Scarab that is found in Mount Gelmer in the north channel of the Seedwater River. For the Black Bow, this can be recovered northeast of the Avenue Balcony site of Grace in Lyondell Royal Capital. Once more, not a huge fan of it, but if you like shooting arrows like a machine gun, this is for you. Now lastly for weapons, this one is more of a bonus just because it's not crazy effective but more of a fun option to use, the Wakizashi. This is another iconic weapon samurais would use, kinda looking like a miniature katana. Since it is a dagger, we're not going to get that much damage out of it unless we use the lightning variation. The reason for this is cause with the lightning affinity placed on it, it actually has a higher attack power rating than the keen version. So we're not buffing up this weapon at all except for us using the lightning scorpion charm or one of the tears in the flask of wondrous physic. What actually makes this weapon fun is just using the ash of war parry with it. A pretty hard ash of war to use but very satisfying when done. I found the easiest enemies to use this on is usually ones that are much bigger than you just because their weapons are easier to see and they usually swing pretty slow making it really easy to time it. It's not needed but it's definitely a fun weapon and ash war to use. For where to find the Wakizashi, it can be located in the Gaul Cave in Kaelid. Then for the ash of war parry, this can be bought from Bernal who is found in the Warmaster Shack. Now that covers everything for the weapons in this build. So before I go over the minimum stats required and the armor I'm using, let's take a better look at the Flask of Wondrous Physic. The best two tiers I found for us to use is the Faith Crystal Knot, which is going to increase our faith by 10 levels for 3 minutes, in turn increasing our damage with our weapon buffs. Then the other is more determined on what kind of weapon buff you're going to be using more often, because we have the Lightning, Flame, and Holy Shrouding tier that increase those damage types by 20% for 3 minutes as well. Just like the Scorpion Charms, you'll want to choose to go accordingly. Moving on to the armor to really match that Samurai look, the entire armor set is just the Land of the Reeds that comes with the Samurai starting class. There's no passive buffs or anything special about this armor other than its looks alone. Once again, if you didn't choose the Samurai starting class, not to worry. You can buy the Land of the Reeds armor set from a merchant who can be found outside his shack in Western Dragon Barrow. Now lastly for this build are the minimum stats required. You'll need at least 16 strength, 20 dex, 25 faith, 10 arcane, and 13 intelligence if you plan on using every single weapon buff and item in this build. I almost forgot about our last two talismans now. Them being Radagon Sword Seal, which increases our vigor, endurance, strength, and dexterity by 5 levels, but makes us take 15% increased damage. So to counter this effect, I just went with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman that reduces our physical damage intake by 20%, just to give us a nice balance. Before I end the video off, I do want to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope I see you all in the next one.